Hello, I'm Bruce Shane, and today I want to take a look at potato guns, and pop guns, and repeaters. I have a lot of different sizes. Now, these are easy to build, they're a lot of fun, and they're also a good demonstration of Boyle's Law. Now, these pieces are actually based on a toy that's been in my room for years and years. In fact, it's gotten so much use that it's not working very well anymore, so I decided to try a variety of different sizes. I have uh, very small ones. Uh, a little bit larger with a long barrel, shorter barrel, this one's a repeater, a little bit larger barrel, uh, a little bit larger yet, <laughs> uh, another repeater, same size, longer barrel, uh, gets even bigger, and then my jumbo one, which is my largest jet, and all these operate under the same principle. And that is as the piston is pushed in, the particles of air inside that chamber move closer and closer, the pressure builds and builds until eventually it becomes great enough that the cork gets pushed out with a nice resounding Now to build one of these, I'm going to start with scissors that have tape on the point to keep it from scratching the inside, but I'm going to use the edge of the scissors to actually scrape off some of the edge of the PVC pipe so that it closely matches the shape of the cork. After I scrape some off here and get the dust out. I'm going to take some sandpaper and sand it down a little bit just to make it a little bit smoother. Now this should allow that cork to fit better than if it were a sharp edge. Next we're going to use foam packing material to give us a better seal against the piston inside the tube. So we're going to cut off some small pieces here. Uh, either three or four pieces is fine. Then going to stick them onto a eye hook with a washer on it and here we go, we get these on. And next I'm now going to screw them on to the end of the dowel, and that's going to be our piston. Now you may have noticed that the foam overlaps quite a bit, and that's fine. We're simply going to take the scissors, and now it's time to trim it down so that it's slightly larger than the dowel itself. Hopefully when it's inside the tube, that's going to give us a nice airtight seal. ready to go inside the tube and here we can see the seal and if I take it and I put my hand over the one end and move the slide back and forth I can feel that it's got good compression so let's put a cork in the end and give it a try adding a handle to the plunger is a nice touch it just makes it easier to use however I would suggest screwing it in place rather than gluing it just in case you want to take it apart now for the stopper we have various options. My smallest popper is actually a plastic straw that I have a small cork that fits into the end very nicely. Pull it back and push and off it goes. Now corks come in all different sizes but as they get larger they also get more expensive. So there are other options. Now if I want to use a potato as a stopper it's simply a matter of jamming that tube down into a potato, pulling it out and now we got a nice plug, and then we take the plunger and drive it forward. Now the potato plug can only be used once, so let's go try something else. My favorite plugs are actually made from foam insulation. Simply take the tube and push down and turn. If you push hard enough, you should be able to get it all the way through. You get a nice plug, and... The advantage of using foam is that you can make the plugs any size you want. Of course, as you make them larger, it does take a little bit more effort to push that tube down through the foam. Now, after we've popped this, if we take some sandpaper, we can rub those edges down, make it a little bit finer, and we now have a plug that we can use over and over again. We just stick it back into place. Now I also like the repeaters, and that's simply a cork that can be pulled back in place by pulling back on the piston. To make these you need a good quality cork. Drill a hole through it, not the string, and then glue it into that cork to make it airtight. 
Now stretch it out to about three quarters of the length of the tube and simply tie that string onto the eye hook that's on the end of the piston. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now let's give it a try. That works pretty good. Now one last note about construction. The dowel going inside has to closely match the inside diameter of the tube. And sometimes that's difficult, especially with the larger ones. So let's take a look at how I solved it. I'll take the handle off here, and I'll push this small dowel through, and I'll pull out the big piston. So the small dowel was glued into the one end, but it actually fits very loosely into the other end to allow it to move back and forth. So this is what it would look like inside the chamber. Well, I hope you like my pop guns. As you can see, they're easy to make. Uh, they're a lot of fun, and my students always look forward to making them themselves. So, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again. <laughs>